Now coming to the banking sector. So every economic survey, uh, these are the common headings which economic survey will be covering. Okay. Uh, regarding the uh, banking sector, the important points to be noted. Okay. So we will we are again taking the latest data. Okay. What is important for us is the latest data regarding these uh, certain important terms in the banking sector. Okay. So in the banking sector, what economic survey is saying is the gross non-performing asset. Okay. You are supposed to know what is the general trend of the gross non-performing asset or gross non-performing advances. So the gross non-performing ratio of scheduled commercial banks has remained the same. Okay. So just for your understanding, the, the current gross non-performing asset ratio of all the scheduled commercial banks is somewhere around 9.3 percentage in uh, in September. Okay, so it is remained. It, it is in 2019. The gross NPA is remain in uh, is remaining around 9.3 percentage. That just for your information, you note down. Then regarding the capital to risk weighted asset ratio, capital of scheduled commercial banks have improved. Okay, so that is a one good thing. Uh, from March 2019 to September 2019, the capital adequacy ratio or capital to risk weighted asset ratio have improved from 14.3 percentage to 15.1 percentage and this improvement is mainly because of the capital adequacy improvement of the public sector banks. Okay, So just for your kind information, the capital adequacy ratio of the scheduled commercial banks in India have improved in the year 2019 mainly because of the improvement in the uh, public sector banks. So it is somewhere around 15.1 percentage in 2019. This is regarding capital adequacy ratio and gross non-performing assets is, uh, remained at 9.3 percentage still at high but comparatively in the last few years it is it is coming down gross non-performing asset. These are the two important points you need to uh, stress. Okay. Then economic survey also talked about monetary transmission. Okay. So what is happening in our monetary transmission? First, you need to understand what is monetary transmission. See, monetary transmission means when RBI in the monetary policy, we know that RBI every two months, uh, in, there will be a bi-monthly monetary policy. Okay. So basically in the bi-monthly monetary policy, RBI takes a decision regarding repo rate. That's why it is called as policy rate. So the policy repo rate either may decrease or increase. But in the last two years, especially in 19, 2019 and 2020, there have been a continuous cut in the repo rate. So we have seen the RBA in 2019 cutting the repo rate and then after in 2020 after the lockdown, RBA have cut the repo rate. So when RBA cut the repo rate, whether, so repo rate has come down, RBA's rate has come down, policy rate has come down. But whether so this should benefit the end customer. Na? So there has to be lower lending rate. Bank should lower their lending rate to the customers. So if bank is lowering the lending rate, then we can say that monetary transmission is happening. RBI cut the repo rate and that cut bank is doing it for their customer. So whether this monetary transmission is happening or not is a big concern and uh, in the last few years, there have been the monetary transmission is ineffective. When RBA cut in 2019, RBA cut by more than 100 basis point, the nearly 40 percentage only uh, lending rate have been cut by the bank. So RBA is very much concerned about the failure of the monetary transmission. Okay, so that is being discussed here. So in 2019, monetary transmission has been weak on three counts. This is what economic survey says that, okay. In 2019, monetary transmission has been weak in three counts. One, based on the rate structure. On rate structure, it is weak. Monetary transmission is weak. Based on the quantity of credit, how much credit the bank gives, that is weak. And also the term structure. So, these are the three, on three counts, on three accounts, on all three areas, monetary transmission has been weak. So, this has been well discussed in the economic survey, we will see that, we will see one by one, uh, uh, why uh, or how this monetary transmission have been weak in three counts. So if you look into the rate structure, okay, the weighted average lending rate, 
So taking all the lending rates, okay, weighted average lending rates of scheduled commercial bank has not declined at all in 2019 despite reduction of repo rate by 135 basis points. So from if you take January 2019 to December 2019, RBI have cut the repo rate by 135 basis point. But the lending rate, if you look into the weighted average lending rate, there is no change in the weighted average lending rate. It has not declined. So this is one signal that monitor transmission has been weak or failed. Now if you look into the credit spread, credit spread is the difference between the repo rate and the weighted average lending rate. So if you look into the credit spread, the difference between repo rate and weighted average lending rate, it is at the highest level. The credit spread is at the highest level. Okay. And the weighted average lending rate on outstanding loan of scheduled commercial bank is 525 basis point higher than the repo rate. See, weighted average lending rate is 525 basis point higher than the repo rate, suggesting that there has been no monetary transmission. Even though in 2019, RBI have cut the repo rate by 135 basis point. So, in, when you take the rate structure, it is very clear, the credit spread is very high, nearly 535 basis point. So, the weighted average lending rate and the repo rate is having a huge difference. So, in that way, in 2019, when you take the rate, monetary transmission has been weak. And if you look into the saving deposit rate, okay. The uh, see you need to have an idea the saving deposit rate is the deposit interest rate gives uh, to uh, to the customers by a bank to their savings deposit. So way back in 2014 if you look into from 2014 to 2017 the, the savings rate savings deposit rate was 4 percentage in 2017 savings deposit rate was cut okay. Uh, from 4 percentage to uh, 3 point, uh, uh, sorry, to uh, nearly uh, 3.5 percentage. Now, in 2019, there have been a general 25 basis cut. So, currently, the savings deposit rate is at a very low rate at 3.25 percentage. Okay. So, in 2019, there have been generally almost all the banks have cut the savings deposit rate. Now, why? the monetary transmission have failed the bank says that okay bank says that repo rate el, uh, cut alone cannot result in monetary transmission because the bank's major the bank deposits okay see bank have to collect deposit to lend money okay the money the bank lend is mainly through the deposits collects from the customers mainly the current account the term sorry the term deposits okay and followed by savings account and current account but the term deposit so the the term deposits interest rate the bank gives so the term deposits of the or the fixed deposit of the bank is competing with the small savings post office smallest savings scheme deposit rate this post office scheme small savings schemes deposit rate is higher than the uh, the deposit rate or the fixed deposit rate given by the bank. So, if the bank cut the fixed deposit rate, then only they can cut the lending rate. But if they cut the deposit rate, what will happen? All the customers will switch over to the post office the, uh, uh, small savings deposit and the bank will lose the uh, major deposits. So, that is the reason why bank says that okay, uh, proportionally the government how to reduce the small savings schemes interest rate because government is fixing the interest rate for small savings scheme. So, one of the reason and important limiting factor uh, seems to be why monetary transmission is failing is that the rate on small savings schemes like public provident fund, okay, public provident fund, there are many sub small scheme schemes are there, post office deposit, uh, small post office deposit schemes are there. So, this is this is decided by the government every quarterly uh, based on the government securities yield is comparatively higher. So, anyway, so this you keep in mind, okay. 
why monetary transmission is failing okay so in uh, in 2000 just a comparison okay in 2014 the weighted average the term deposit rate okay so the term deposit is the fixed deposit okay the weighted in 2014 uh, the the interest deposit rate of the term uh, the weighted average term deposit rate and ppf interest rate is was same so in 2014 there was no difference between weighted average term deposit rate of the banks and the post office savings schemes like ppf but in 2019 there is a difference of 100 and 115 115 basis point difference between public provident fund interest rate and the banks term deposit weighted average term deposit rate so this is the one of the factor which the bank says they can't cut the money means they cannot cut their lending rate based on our base repo rate cut okay so so there is a unless this term deposit rate the, there is unless the the term deposit rate can decline only if there is decrease in the administered rate of these small savings schemes okay unless the government administered rate means the rate is desired by the government unless there is a cut and there is a difference uh, between the term deposit rate of the banks and the small savings schemes is very low or very means it should be somewhere around almost same or there should not be a difference of more than 25 basis point unless that happens monitor transmission to be uh, effective its chances are very low okay so it is uh, the government have to decide because government only every quarterly decides what is the uh, interest rate they provide for these small scaling scheme so just see the figure in 2014 okay both uh, the weighted average term deposit rate and public provident fund was same but it started uh, there have been a differences now if you look into the public provident fund and the weighted average term deposit rate it is somewhere around 100 basis point this is one of the reason why monitor transmission is ineffective so they can ask you question based on that you can answer it okay so we discussed about the rate structure now coming to the term structure okay how the monitor transmission is affecting the term structure okay so the rbi monetary easing as well as liquidity adjustment facility had some impact on see see rbi rbi monetary easing or more injecting liquidity have reduced the short term interest rate see short term interest rate there have been some impact on the short term interest rate but this rbi monetary easing is have not made any impact in the long term interest rate or long term securities so if you look into the difference between okay if you look into the dip from april 2019 to uh, january 2020 see this red color is 10 year government security which is the government benchmark government security the long term in uh, security and if you take the 364 day treasury bill blue color see the difference so if you look into the 364 day treasury bill you can see that there have been a decrease in the short term government security that is treasury bill 364 treasury bill but there is no that much difference in the 10 year government security okay so the yields on short term government securities have declined much faster than the long term government security so if you look into the term structure term structure is comparing the long term securities with the short term securities so long term securities uh, yield has not fallen interest rate has not fallen but short term 364 treasury bills have shortened okay so in terms of term structure also monetary transmission have failed so the reduction only happened in the terms of short term uh, securities not not in the long term securities so this is the second point of view uh, regarding monetary transmission now coming to the quantity of credit or the credit growth the credit do uh, growth uh, despite a decrease in the policy rate in 2019 the credit growth have been declining since the beginning of 2019 so even the quantity of credit credit growth have been declining from beginning of 2019 if you look into the bank credit growth uh, from 12.9 percentage into april 2019 it has declined to 7.1 percentage in december 2019 so the quantity of credit or credit growth in 2019 also have lowered or very low so the moderation in credit growth has witnessed 
in major segments across all the major segments of non food credit except okay only difference only difference in the credit growth is in relation to personal loans only personal loans have increased in the financial year 1920 except the personal loans all the non food credit loans have resulted in declining so the reasons for the declining credit growth you can say that it is the sharp deceleration in the credit growth to the service sector one of the reason why the credit growth are declined is that the growth the loan to the service sector have been very low then credit growth to industry has been very low in the recent months and there have been negative growth negative credit negative gro credit growth to my msme sector as well as textiles so basically to msme sector as uh, then industrial sector service sector there have been a continuous decline in the credit so that is the reason why in 2019 there have been decline in the credit growth okay so monetary transmission from rate structure point of view from the term structure point of view from the quantity of credit point of view it you can see that it is a failure